Hey folks, welcome back. A couple months ago I upgraded the starter and cables on my 2002 Ford E350. I was trying to get a few more months out of the old batteries, but they finally gave up on me. The 7.3 Power Stroke Econoline takes a lot of power to start. It actually takes two Group 65 batteries to warm up the glow plugs and spin up the starter. One of them is an easy swap, but the other is located under the frame and presents some challenges. Stick around and I'll show you how I got it done. I'm still running the basic auto parts store flooded lead acid batteries from the previous owner. But when they eventually fail, I will upgrade to the Odyssey PC1750T absorbed glass matte batteries. To compare these, the basic $200 parts store battery weighs 45 pounds, has 750 cold cranking amps, and a two-year limited warranty. The OEM Motorcraft batteries for the 7.3 weigh 46 pounds and have 850 cold cranking amps. These Monster AGMs weigh 58 pounds, have 950 cold cranking amps each, and a four-year limited warranty. AGM batteries handle deep discharge much better than flooded lead acid, and they hold up way better in harsh, high vibration environments, which is common with our 7.3s. At nearly 400 bucks a piece, they're not cheap though, so hit the subscribe button and consider using the affiliate links in the description below if you wanna buy anything that I've shown in this video. It won't change your pricing at all, and I'll earn a small commission, maybe enough to buy a power lug for my next project. We got some new batteries to put in. This one arrived today. It's an Odyssey PC1750 AGM battery. This is the burliest battery that I know of to put in a 7.3. It has 950 cold cranking amps and 74 amp hours of nominal capacity. The shipping was really solid. They packed it nicely in a cardboard box with a bunch of layers. So it arrived undamaged, uh, despite being a 58 pound box. And I'm excited to put them in. So to remove this battery, I need to get a lift under it, unbolt it and drop it down. And it's gonna be these bolts here. This one's already removed. And then here and on the other side. It's pretty simple. I just need to get a lift underneath. So there we've got the battery out, just need to slide it off the lift, pull the cables and see what we're dealing with. Well, it's definitely not the same as the underhood battery, so probably good that I'm pulling it. Pulling the underhood battery on my van is quite easy. Having replaced the terminals with these Schumachers. And the previous owner took out the battery tie down, so you might have a couple more steps if you're doing this on your own. Out with the old, in with the new. So I got these terminal protectors. These are the fancy ones that go up and over and wrap around. They were the same price as the simple ones. So if they're not gonna work on my terminals, I'll just trim them. But these are gonna help keep 
uh, the posts from corroding over time. So we'll just toss those on there. Wow, look at that post. That is vastly higher quality than what we were dealing with here. Actually gonna leave that negative disconnected until I get the other battery put in. So there we've got everything snugged up here. This battery's all hooked up, just need to tighten up those terminals. And I'm showing 12.8 volts on my meter inside, so that's better. We were sitting at 12.5 on the old batteries, so I'm happy about that. Now just time to get this lifted back in, bolted up, and start the van. Honestly, this whole project wasn't too bad up until this point, and it was just really difficult to line up the bolt holes and get everything tightened up again. It just took a lot of crawling around on my back of the van. I think without a good jack or a transmission lift, this would be darn near impossible. Anyhow, after a whole bunch of wrestling and repositioning, I managed to get all four bolts in and tight, and the installation of the frame battery was done. Alright, well if this isn't the part you've been waiting for, it sure is the part that I have. So here's our monitor, showing 12.8. Let's start it up and see what happens. Eleven six. Glow plug lights off. Time to give her. Voltage dropped to eleven point six on glow plugs and ten point five volts when firing the starter. That is a huge improvement over the old batteries, which would drop to 10.6 on glow plugs and single digits when starting if they started the van at all. Now I just need to keep an eye on my alternator. I'll replace it with a high output alt when it's time comes. When I first bought the van, it wouldn't start unless I shorted the starter solenoid with a screwdriver, so finally completing the starter system upgrade feels great and should keep the van firing up reliably for years to come. I still have a ton of work to do on the engine, body, and camper build though, so subscribe to the channel and come along for the ride. Thanks for watching. See you next time.